Today we're going to look at segmented displays and there are a couple of different types of ones that take lots of wires and then there's a type where you only have to plug in a couple of wires. So you might be able to tell my preference is for the I2C type or the SPI type because you don't need a mess of wires. But in the kits, if you're lucky enough to get a segmented display, you're most likely going to get the many wires type. Of the many wires type, there are common cathode and common anode. And you'll remember from the RGB LED, that's a similar thing. You need lots and lots of wires because each digit, so I've got a four digit display, each digit needs a bunch of wires because each segment is its own LED. The nice thing about these is they're LEDs, so they light up. So you use them on everything from clocks to countdown timers to microwaves. They're all around us. So it's worth knowing about them. It's worth using them. But my preference is to go with the ones that don't create a rat's nest around your breadboard. This is the code for the one that I've got, which is this, <laughs> the uh, HS5461AS, four digit seven segment display. And I'm using the SevSeg library, which is pretty neat library, and it works with both cathode and anode type. Do look up either on Google, or if you're lucky enough to have a data sheet, your own display, because they're all different brands, different uh, ages, and different versions, so you need to know the pinouts of yours. And the numbering system for the one I've got seems to be the bottom left, where the decimal point is, is one, and it counts up across left to right, and then at the top, right to left. And to make a figure eight, you've got segment A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then the decimal point. So for the display pin one, it creates segment E, and I've plugged that into the Arduino seven, and then so on. So you can see it's a lot, it's easy to get it wrong, so just take it steady, be careful, and when you get a chance, get one of the nice I2C type. We include the seven segment header library. We create a sevseg object. This is a countdown timer. So I've set my total count to 100 seconds. And I set the actual counter that we're going to decrement to this total count. I've set the delay to a thousand milliseconds, i.e. a second. So it's going to count down 100 seconds. I've got four digits in my display. The pins that control which digit should display are the 6, 3, 2, and 12, and I've used two, 220 ohm resistors on each of those pins. And then the segments are these pins, and it's digital, so it doesn't need to be PWM, fortunately, because it uses a lot. Now, the recommendation is 330 ohm, but it seemed to be dull on mine. You can see what works on yours. I don't think I'm going to be harming it too much using 220. You can have the resistors on the segments, or you can have the resistors on the digits. On mine, it seemed to work with the resistors on the digits. So my resistors on 6, 3, 2, and 12. And then mine's a common cathode. Yours might be a common anode. I've seen examples of both and I've also burnt them out so just be careful. You can test the pins to see which is which. Um, good luck with that. I, as I say I'm not a fan of these. And then we use all of those values to begin the segment. We set the brightness to 30. That seems to look good in my room see what works for you between 0 and 100. And then 
I blank the display because this is on startup and this is a non-blocking timer so this is an example of not using delay what we do is we set the timer to millis and we check in the loop if the current millis which will be a number minus the timer we set is more than delay time so we check if the millis minus timer is more than equal to the delay time if it is then it's time to update the display all of this happens very fast and I'm blinking the decimal point just to show how you can do that by doing the modulus which is the remainder so we're basically seeing if the counter divides by two and so it'll alternate between on and off if I was to set this to one, then it would be one decimal place and two and three and so on. Minus one means turn it off. So I'm blinking the first decimal point on and off. And then we decrement the counter. Otherwise, we reset it back to the start, which is 100. So this is from reset. It's going to count down to zero and then it'll start counting down to zero again. And then we update the timer so that we've got an up-to-date value. And then we have to refresh the display repeatedly because it uses persistence of vision to show the display for four digits and all those segments. So it has to update very, very quickly. And which is why if we use the built-in delay, it could cause all kinds of problems because it actually halts execution. Some things still execute, but it pretty much halts execution for that delay and we actually want the refresh to keep happening but check the time in the background if you want the best segmented display then the adafruit one is hard to beat it is extremely bright and easy to use. We include the LED backpack library, which is what controls their range of I2C LED boards. And we create a seven segment object. And just like before, we set the variables for the countdown timer. Because it's I2C, you select the address. The default is 070, but you can choose uh, from a few. And we can set the brightness between 0 to 15. And even at the brightness setting of three, it's very, very bright. Zero isn't off, zero is the lowest brightness. And then we initialize the display with the full counter and we say it's a decimal, and then we write it away. Now, because it's an I2C and it's got a little chip on there, we don't have to keep refreshing, but we're still using our non-blocking timer because instead of using delay, it's, it's a nicer thing and we had the code already. Like before, we set whether we want to show the dot or not based on whether it's divisible by two and we increment, well, decrement the counter. We reset the timer and then this is the method for doing individual digits and there's a colon in the middle that you can turn on and off and I'm setting the dot at the end on and off based on the draw dot and then we write the display away and as you can see we're only having to write the display away when we're actually changing it as opposed to before when we we're having to do it every refresh. If you get an I2C seven segment display from eBay or AliExpress, it's more than likely going to be one of these guys, the TM1637. And there's a library available for this one as well. And in this case, we specify 
which pins we're going to connect with. And on the back of the board, there's clearly identified uh, pins. So I'm using pins four and five, and you pass those into this function here to create your object. And same code as before. To display the number, we pass in the counter and if we want leading zeros. And the brightness is between zero and seven and in this case zero is off and seven's the brightest. And uh, it's quite bright at four so you probably don't need to get it to seven. Very similar as before but I'm, I'm not blinking the dot, we've seen that already. Just counting down from the total and when it gets down to zero, resetting it. Thank <laughs> you.